Hi, I'm Dr. Cobbs again. Welcome back to BrainCancer.org's lecture series on brain tumors. The topic of this discussion is gliomas. Most of the glioblastomas that we see occur in patients in the 50 to 70 year age group, and these present de novo as full bone full-blown glioblastomas. And we have MRI evidence that suggests that these tumors can come up over the course of four to six months out of essentially normal brain. So these tumors often or most likely do not have a IDH1 mutation. <clears throat> They're usually characterized by loss of other gene products that prevent the breaks of the tumor, which stop the tumor from growing. Um, a gene called C, excuse me, CDKN2A. And what does this gene do? This gene is upstream of two critical genes or proteins that stop cells from proliferating when they shouldn't, called P53 and RB. And you also have a simultaneous loss of another gene called PTEN, and this gene prevents activation of some of the accelerator pathways that go downstream, like PI3K and AKT. Simultaneously, these tumors often have amplification, which means multiple chromosomes producing multiple genes that encode for multiple proteins of things that sit on the cell surface that give the growth signal. Normally, if you take a, a normal astrocyte and look, for instance, for the cell surface expression of a factor called epidermal growth factor receptor, or EGFR, find maybe a thousand of these molecules or a hundred of these molecules on the cell. However, if the chromosomes are pumping out multiple, multiple, multiple copies of this gene and these are encoding for multiple copies of the protein, then you see amplification of the gene and you get multiple copies of the protein on the cell surface. If all of these cell surface proteins are giving the growth signal, then you can see that that tumor will have an inability to stop growing, especially if it can't apply the brakes. <clears throat> Some of these proteins like EGFR will acquire mutations. There's an important one called EGFR V3. which is a mutant EGFR where the outer surface of this molecule, instead of having a certain normal configuration, has a loss of part of that outer part so that it has a very specific mutated configuration right here. That's important because this particular mutation is identifiable and can be a target for an immune response. You may have heard of the cell dex immunotherapy. The goal of that is to have an antibody come in and target this molecule and start a cell-mediated killing of the tumor cell. This V3 mutation only occurs in about a third of glioblastomas, unfortunately. So I hope that this talk has given you an idea that tumor cells arise probably years previous, in the case of secondary, through a, a pathway of loss of IDH1 or mutation and then subsequent mutations that lead to glioblastoma called secondary, or as a primary glioblastoma in which 
the cells acquire mutations that send them rapidly to glioblastoma status through loss of certain breaks and acquisition of certain accelerators that will make the tumors grow in an unabated fashion.